You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, get out, Get the point. Good. And now... Send Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Hey there, hi there, ho there, and happy wacka 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 doodle Wednesday to y'all. I hope you're having an absolutely splendiferous day. Let me see here if I can check my levels, get my levels right. Uh, da, da. Is that any better? I don't know. Um, da da. I'm just playing. (laughs) You would think I'm a trained professional, but that's what you get for having an independent thought. (laughs) Yeah, I was a little on the zombified today. Yeah, guess what? (laughs) That's right, poxified. A little on the zombified. Thank you to my youngest daughter for that one. Oh my goodness, and it is a wacka 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 doodle Wednesday, and this is Grammy Mary here on Grammy's Rocket Chair on RealLibertyMedia.com channel three, also on the RLM.xyz site or RLMRadio.xyz site, um, RLM Spreaker channel, RLM TuneIn radio station, and several other RLM num 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 places. So, let's see here. Um, da, da, where was I going to go? I was going to go somewhere. I was going to go crazy is what I was going to go. Oh, okay. So here we go real quick before I move along and say hi, because I don't want to lose this. An old Cherokee told his grandson, my son, there is a battle between two wolves inside us all. One is evil. It is anger, jealousy, greed, and resentment, inferiority, lies, and ego. The other is good. It is joy, peace, love, hope, humility, kindness, empathy, and truth. The boy thought about it and asked his grandfather, So, which wolf wins? And the old man quietly replied, The one you feed. Be mindful, people, of what you put in your mind and what you put out to others. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. Oh, thank you, Grim. Okay. Cool beans. Um, da, 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 da. Too pricey, but good. Oh, pizza, 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 pizza. I'm having leftover chir- chili. Leftover chili, 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 chili. I love chili. <laughs> and it fuels my rocket chair. <laughs> there I am. Thank you, Barman, over here on Twitter. Barman just tweeted me out. I th- Thank you, darling. I truly do appreciate it. Looks like I lost a couple more stalkers again. Yeah. I can turn corners with the best of them, let me tell you. I can change my mind with the best of them as well. Just wait and listen. You'll probably hear it. Oh, well. Okay. Let me put this on Twitter real fast. Or maybe not real fast. (laughs) Okay. Um, dun, 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 dun. over on Fakeybook, I don't think I have anybody paying attention over on Fakeybook, over on the Effin site, that Freedoms Network site, Grimner and Bo Diddy, the two that have brought that to us. Thank you ever so much, gentlemen, for this wonderful site. I see Grimmy's over here. I see I'm over here. Um, I see a meme that I shared from Minds over here. If you think American kids are traumatized by mass shootings, imagine, excuse me, imagine what the children in countries the U.S. has been bombing for decades are experiencing. Imagine, if you will, a world where we quit doing that shit. Okay, I also see Michaels over here as well as the lovely Mary B and KD Troxel. Yay! These bombings in Austin could have been avoided with bomb control laws. Raise bomb making level t- age to 21 and create bomb free zones. Yeah, that'll do it, Java. <laughs> because bombers read signs just like those criminals that are carrying guns. Uh huh. 
Sure. That'll work really well. Okay. Um, da -da. I'm not, oh, good Lord. Breaking news. No. That's Twitter. I'm, I'm closing you, Twitter. Sorry, Twitter. See you. Love you. Bye. Okay. Um, over on Minds. Hello, Minds. I forgot to share over here, or I think I forgot to share over here. I don't remember if I shared over here or not. <laughs> if you don't mind, it don't matter. It's all mind over matter. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure Grimmy shared it over here. Thank you, Grimmy. And now to the RLM, which is where you need to be if you want to give me static. Those of you that are listening in on Spreaker, I love you dearly, but man, I can't keep track of both chats. So come on over to reallibertymedia.com. Um, think of a nickname, log into the chat, and give me some shit. And I'll give it right back. Because I don't have the proper, cer proper certificates from the EPA to store shit. So I have to give it back. <laughs> Not that I ever actually tried to fill out the paperwork or anything anyway. Good Lord, you know you have to press hard. You're signing three. Okay. Um, who is this? Oh, dude, you're funky looking. Okay, back to... Hi, bar man. How are you doing, sweetheart? You are the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world. I also see Cowboy Tech is here. I hope you're hearing pleasant voices, darling. Grimner, the RLM god is over here. Yay, Grimmy, as well as the lovely Moose Girl. Hey, Moosey, how's your world? The lovely Kate is also here. Hey, Kate, how's things in the great state of Florida? Oh, Austin, they just have to be in the news, don't they? I shared something wonderful about Austin earlier today, and then you have to have this kind of stuff. Apparently, the universe thinks things need to balance out. Stop it. We don't need to have that much balance, okay? Asmo is here. Hey there, Mr. Asmodeus, as well as the lovely Beth Z, although I have not seen Beth Z chitty chat for a while. Of course, I really haven't been on, I've been logged in, but not really on much of late either, so I can't talk to, well, yeah, I can. I can talk a lot. <laughs> I also see Chalcedony is here. Hey, Chalcedony, as well as Chloe. E -E. Free enslaved. Hey, free. This is a recording. <laughs> I am Memorex. <laughs> Your worst nightmare. I also see I'm here, as well as I be Don C. And looky there, Java, 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 Java. Dr. Two is in the house. JJ's. Hi, JJ's. How you doing, you Scottish feller, you? Juana Taco is here. You know what? It's taco evening in town. $8 for adults and $4 for children over five years of age at the Vets Club. All you can eat. And I'm on the radio. Go figure. See how you are. I have to do without my taco. <sighs> That's dedication. <laughs> I also see the lovely Rain is here. Hi, Rain, as well as RLM Fluke, the Vanna White of the RLM channel. Hi, Rob Works. Did you fire that bubbler and I missed it? I missed it. Uh, Iron Works BBQ. Oh, sweet. Sweet with a free barbecue. There they go. Awesome sauce. Um, Where was I at? Oh, trusty. Hi, Trusty. How are you doing, sweetie? Beetle. I see you, Beetle. Beetle, 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 Beetle. Colfax 101 is also logged in, but marked away. Hi, Dimma and Frumpy. And I be Don C. Woik is here, too. Wow, Don is double dipping. I also see Kozu is in the house, as well as Meisterer, too. And mm, Bot. Do I sound like Yoda? When I do that, mmm, but. <laughs> How about moi, 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 moi. Poxyfied and Poxy Home are both here as well. Double dip and epoxy going on. Epoxy upon you, my child. I also see Papa Pond sauces in the chat, as well as Teddy, the cuddly one, and to round out the crew, the one, the only, the Phantom 2 that did my intro for me. Thank you, Phantom. You the bomb. Not like the bombs in Austin. You're just pretty damn cool. Yeah, it's amazing how... Didn't I tell you they were supposed to be having some kind... Of course, that was supposed to... Was that last week or was that this week? That they were going to have the little um, training thing again. 
Yeah, they're so good at that. Hmm. And I watched a video earlier today uh, from a gentleman who is a former, he's a retired principal, well, actually, retired military who went to teaching, then wound up being principal of a high school, and then wound up being superintendent of a school district where he was in charge of 1,800 kids. And his take on this whole Florida shit, and yeah, he's calling bullshit on it. So, yeah, that was an interesting one to listen to as well. But first thing I'm going to get to, because I'm feeling, I'm feeling like I want to be more in tune with the health side tonight for some silly reason. So this one is from the Essential Oils University, um, marked today, as a matter of fact. Now, the link is over here on uh, Fakey Book. But I will go to the Essential Oils website and grab the link as well. Because, um, yeah. Essential Oils and Male Breasts. Media reporting science, quote unquote, is severely lacking. Oh, okay. Yeah. As this tired story of lavender and tea tree causing male breasts has resurfaced in the media again... I thought I would give some time to it so people can know how to properly address some of the aspects of these studies, with some points that the average person at home with little science background might not think about. As with all quote-unquote science articles that are hyped up to make them palatable to the mainstream corporate lame-ass propaganda media, for shock value, etc., there are many details that are not disclosed and many questions about these studies that are not asked. Generally, people just read the headlines in a few sentences and then make conclusions that the articles, since it's from a well-known source, must be true, because it's on the interwebs, don't you know? This is a truly disastrous way of thinking. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's the way most people operate. But it's pretty much the way things are in America. We are very lazy when it comes to science, and we are suffering because of it. It's way worse now than it was even just 20 years ago. And the reporters in these outlets are a large part of the problem just wanting the sellable story and not caring about any real science behind it. That's because they're reporters. They report. They are not journalists. They do not dig into. So, for example, if we really read any of these reports with a critical eye, we can see several problems. First of all, we never know the source of the oils used in these studies, and you never see any GC reports on the oils used. We have no idea, even if they were actual essential oils. Did they buy them on Amazon? The media is ob oblivious to the fact that 75% of all essential oils on the market are adulterated and most of the soap products claiming to contain things like lavender, rose, etc. actually have 0% true essential oils in them. Yeah, that's right. 0%. There are so many soap and cosmetic products out there that people are using thinking that they have essential oils in them, but actually they are very synthetic frequences. Yummy. In this current BBC study, they did not even use essential oils in the study. So if you actually read the article, you would see that the new study looked at eight key chemicals from the hundreds that make up the oils. Four of the tested chemicals appeared in both oils and the other were in either oil. So what the media doesn't understand is that study, uh, when you study single chemicals is not the same thing as studying a true essential oil that has hundreds of chemicals in it. 
furthermore, they don't say anything about the um, enantiometric enantiometric purity. Okay, thanks, Dr. P, for throwing that one word in there that I can't say. Yeah, the purity of the chemicals used. Oh, anonotomers. <laughs> I'm going to stumble over this all article long. Are basically the molecules, <coughs> excuse me, that are used to mirror images of one another, and they can behave quite differently in the body. For example, all amino acids that make up proteins in living organisms are made from L-amino acids. We can take amino acid supplements, but if they are made synthetically, many times they will be a 50-50 mixture of L and D forms. The D form will be completely unusable by the body, and the best case scenario just expelled in the urine. In the worst case scenario, they can form or the D form can actually be deadly. All of these isolates that were used in the study have both an L and a D form. The plant typically makes one form or the other in major excess. For example, the lanolol and lanolin acetate in lavender, the main components of lavender, are around 90% in the L form with very little of the D in the true essential oil. Now, if they use cheap synthetic lanolol and lanolil acetate in the study, they would have been equal ratios of L and D form. The same goes for basically most synthetics that are common to essential oils, and yet there's no mention of what anomino and en <laughs> Those things. <laughs> Anantiomers. Anantomers. There we go. Anantomers. That's how I'm going to say it from now on. Of these chemicals which were used in the studies. So, yeah, basically, they didn't tell you if it was a synthetic or a true essential oil. They didn't give you the ratio of the breakdown. They didn't even use the essential oil. They just used different chemicals known to be in certain essential oils. Now, the next problem with this current study is that they were tested on human cancer cells in the laboratory to measure the changes. The researchers found all eight demonstrated varying degrees of promoting estrogen and or inhibiting testosterone properties. What? Are you serious? I don't know where to start here, but apparently testing individual chemicals on cancer cells in a dish and extrapolating that to how complex essential oil mixtures would behave in an even more complex human body is simply folly that I would not even expect a grad student to participate in. Just as you cannot say that because um, because frankincense oil kills cancer cells in a dish that you can cure cancer by drinking cancer or frankincense oil, it's ludicrous. Now, the BBC article was also so poorly written, it's hard for me to comment in a polite way. These reporters should have required to have, or should be required to have a degree in the science field for which they're going to report. The article contradicts itself. For example, it states, Prof, uh, Professor Hughes, Emeritus Professor of Pediatrics at the University of Cambridge, said the findings have confirmed why an individual using such oils containing these chemicals may develop breast tissue. It then goes on to say, the anti-male hormone effects are rather unexpected and it is not possible to comment further without the data. Huh? And then it says, of course, not everyone exposing themselves to such oils has adverse effects. So it is possible that there are particular individuals who may be more sensitive to the effects of the chemicals, or perhaps are using the products in excess. 
Oh, but they don't want to say that. They want to have those big headlines that say, if you use lavender oil or tea tree oil, which is basically melaleuca oil, you're going to get boobs, or for you men folk, moobs. Mm. How about there are other factors in some individuals that maybe you haven't considered, and perhaps they are using products that don't have true essential oils in them in the first place. Yeah, how about considering that, douches? I'm not a reporter or a scientist, and even I know that much. Okay, I'm a reader <laughs> and a commentator. Hmm, so, <coughs> excuse me. The article then goes on to make the point against itself and admits, however, there are important factors that must be taken into account when interpreting these results. The tests are conducted in cancer cells which may not represent the situation in normal breast tissue. May not represent the situation in normal breast tissue? Really? I can't believe this is a scientist speaking. How about absolutely will not represent the situation when are or when we are talking about inside the human body. Then they cap the article off with these two gems. The concentration, parentheses, dosage, to which the cells are exposed may not be equivalent to exposure in humans. You ever notice that whenever they do something to rats or anything like that in a petri dish, they always give them like 100 times what the average human being would consume in a lifetime. But they give that to the rat in a single dosage. And then they extrapolate it out and say, well, it must be true. See what happened? No, anything in excess, my dear, anything in excess is bad juju. This goes on to say, there is a complex relationship between um, estrogen, testosterone, and other hormones in the body that cannot be replicated in these experiments. And, at present, there is insufficient evidence to support the concept that exposure to lavender and tea tree oil um, containing products cause uh, gynecomastia in children. Ooh, so it's causing little boys to get moobs. That's not cool. And further epidemiological, epidemiological, there you go. And experimental studies are required before you release it to the press. I, I just added that little bit there. At this point, the reasonable, intelligent person should be asking, how did this report even make it to the BBC? It's called propaganda, hun, and feeding a narrative. All of the above comments, which negate the validity of the entire study, and yet the author reports earlier in the article that Professor Hughes, Emeritus Professor of Pediatrics at the University of Cambridge, said the findings have confirmed why an individual using such oils containing these chemicals may develop breast tissue. As if it's a certainty that essential oils are causing it. It's unbelievable. This makes me wonder if the BBC author even bothered to read and comprehend his own article. In summary, please read any science subject in the mainstream media with a very critical eye and a whole container of salt. Not just the essential oil related stuff, but anything related to science. These people are typically journalism majors. Most of them could not pass a high school chemistry exam. So why would we trust them to accurately report any science subject that they obviously are not capable of understanding themselves? And even if they report it correctly, they don't have the skills to ask critical questions. And oftentimes, the obvious pesky details can get in the way of a good story. So the motivation here is not really there to ask them. If there is one thing I can leave you with when evaluating any science article on essential oils, 
if the article does not give a full GC slash MS report, which is basically the chemical breakdown of the oil um, used in the study, it's not worth the cyberspace it's written in. Thank you, Dr. Pappas. So, I am going to see if I can't um, pull this up from the Essential Oils University. Oh no, I wanted it at I wanted the website, hun, not your Facebook page. Hmm, where's it is? There it is. Is that it? Let me see. Yeah, there it is. Uh, now I need to find the. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't want to. I don't want to have to log in right now because I don't remember what my password is. I'm going to share this, and those of you that can read it, that would be awesome. Those of you that can't, I will see if I can't um, put it out. What? You can cure cancer by drinking cancer. Cool. Well, how awesome is that? Do you know that everybody has cancer in them? Everybody. It just doesn't express itself in a deadly manner on everybody. Especially, you know, and if you're not feeling well, that's not that's not necessarily a good time to go to the doctor cuz that's when they start practicing medicine on you. Just saying. I hate it when they practice medicine. So, okay. Um, da -da, da -da, da -da -da. Now, let me, um, I'm going to put this over on the FN site too, real quick, and see if it'll taste over there. Yeah, you will get moobs. <laughs> You know, there's some people that would probably go, I got moves. Cool. And then there's some that would go, mm, no, not exactly my cup of tea. But, hmm, there you go. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, I'm going to go to my pocket because I did find uh, something that I stuck in here earlier in the week. Where's that at? See, and then I scrolled down, and I went past it. Oh, there it is. This is from Herb.co, and it's actually from um, July 1st of 2016. But it's still relevant as far as I'm concerned. New research confirms cannabis kills brain cancer, not your brain. This is your brain. This is your brain on cannabis. Hmm. So, a group of Spanish researchers have been um, searching for cannabis-based cancer treatments for nearly two decades. And the team is from the Complutense Uver University of Madrid. Complutense? Uh, I'm sure I butchered that one too. Uh, thus far, some of the experiments have been nothing short of miraculous. The team, led by Professor... Velasco and Guzman are testing cannabinoid treatment's ability to kill glioma cells. Whatever glioma makes. Glioma makes a, oh hey, guess what? It makes up 80% of all the malignant brain cancers. Ah, in fact, it's one of the most aggressive forms of cancer out there. But the glioblastoma uh, reaches stage four, the average life expectancy is less than two years. This is with surgery and traditional treatments like radiation and chemotherapy, which I bet a lot of you did not know that chemotherapy kills at least as many people as the cancer. So, you know, half of those people that uh, supposedly die from cancer, quote unquote cancer, half of those people are dying from the treatment because it's just so wonderful, don't you know? So, with such grim diagnosis, developing um, effective treatment alternatives is an absolute must. 
Fortunately, the Madrid team is finding success where few thought success was possible. Back in the early 2000s, Dr. Velasco and his team had a breakthrough. They applied extracted THC to glioblastoma cells cultured outside of the body. THC is the main psychoactive compounds in cannabis. What happened shocked researchers around the world. The tumor cells stopped growing. Later on, tumor cells actually began to die. But how? Turns out THC kills glioblastoma cells in a couple of ways. THC and other cannabinoids cut off the tumor's blood supply and cause cancer cells to commit suicide. In 2004, researchers found that cannabis alters genes that produce a compound known as VEGF. VEGF stands for Vascular Endothelial Growth Factor, and this compound helps grow new blood vessels. When cancer cells begin to grow large, they need to start creating their own blood vessels. The Spanish researchers treated mice and two human brain cancer patients with cannabinoid medicines. In both models, VEGF was reduced, limiting the tumor's blood supply, and this finding was truly groundbreaking. Coupled with additional evidence that cannabis can slow the growth of tumors, the case for cannab cannabinoidal medicine just kept getting stronger. Another major discovery that cannabinoids may actually kill cancer cells is that uh, compounds in the herb prevented tumors from growing, began to starve them by cutting off the blood supply, and eventually caused cancer cells to self-destruct. This self-destruction is a form of what the scientists called programmed cell death. Now, programmed cell death occurs in two ways. Um, apoptosis and autophagy autophagy I G. yeah both of them are normal for cells but when a cell becomes too old or damaged the body uses these mechanisms to eliminate the rogue cell for some reason cancer cells do not self-destruct rather they continue to grow and grow creating life-threatening tumors in their investigations, the Spanish researchers found that THC caused cancer cells to auto-digest themselves or undergo autophagy or phagy, however you pronounce that. We actually discovered a new mechanism by which cannabinoids activate a signaling pathway that involves what we call autophagy, which would be the self-digestion of the cells. So, actually, when cannabinoids are binding to the cells, they trigger a cell signaling mechanism. One of the things they are activating is like a self-digestion of the cell that is leading to cancer cell death. In other words, they resorb into the system. The funny thing is, the cell death only happens to the cancer cells. Normal cells in the body remain unharmed. This finding is interesting since back in 1998, the same group of researchers found that THC also triggers apoptosis um, in glioma cells as well. So cannabinoids kill cancer cells by using both mechanisms of programmed cell death. With all of this potential, it's about time that we have some clinical trials in real cancer patients. Luckily, some are about to start later this year, which once again, this was 2016. Now, Velasco and his team are working on a larger trial, and the trial will include 30 to 40 patients in a handful of Spanish hospitals. And the University of Madrid has teamed up with these hospitals to administer cannabis treatments and test the efficacy. This is the first time something like this will be done at this scale in a hospital setting. Funds for the research came mostly from crowdfunding efforts throughout Europe, and some of the largest sums came from Medical Cannabis Bike Tour. 
It's an annual tour that's organized by Luke Kroll of Amsterdam's Paradise Seeds and has raised several thousand euro for Velasco's research. Back in 2006, Velasco's team conducted a pilot study with only nine glioblastoma patients, and the study took or looked at THC only, and it was administered intracranially, meaning it was given to the brains directly. Moving forward, cannabinoid medicines will be administered in other formats. The results of the pilot study are interesting and the study looked at patients who were unresponsive to conventional treatments and had already had surgery to remove the tumors. After surgery, most of the patients lived an average of 24 weeks, even with THC administration. Well, that's because the regular treatments did way more damage than THC could repair in such a short amount of time. Personal opinion here. Yet, two of the patients continued to live for another year, and in those pa patients, THC treatment seemed to slow the progression of tumor cells temporarily. Once ag I need to remind you, too, one of the things that the radiation and that chemotherapy does to the body is it destroys the immune system. It destroys it, and they will tell you that. They have to crash the system in order to kill the boogeyman. In other words, in order to get the boogeyman out of the house, we have to burn the house down around y'all. And if the boogeyman seems to survive, then, well, we burn the house down. That's the mentality they have. Eight of the nine patients showed a, resp a positive response to the THC treatment, which gives hope for the larger clinical trial moving forward. <coughs> Excuse me. There are more than a few stories circulating from people who have cured their cancer with cannabis. However, no clinical trials of the efficacy of cannabis medicines as a sole cancer treatment have been completed. Why? Because Big Pharma can't have that because that will cut into their profits. This does create a problem. Doctors aren't sure how much cannabis should be used or what kinds are best. This is from Dr. Sanchez and she explains we don't know if cannabinoids cure cancer because we don't have clinically controlled studies saying that we know that they work in clinical models of cancer. And we have a lot of anecdotal reports from people saying that they have been cured or they have cured their cancers with cannabinoids. But from the medical community's perspective, we don't have that evidence yet. No, because the medical community is not going to, even if they know that their patient said, no, I'm not going this route, I'm going to treat myself, and then the patient goes back a year later and they are cancer-free because they used cannabis or what have you. The medical community is not going to admit that whatever treatment the patient gave themselves worked. They're just going to say it's gone into remission. We're going to call it a mackerel, I mean a miracle. No, it's a fish story what they're telling you. So when asked about the specific ratio of THC to CBD that a person needs to fight cancer, Sanchez continues, I wouldn't say that a one-to-one -one ratio is the need. I would say that each individual, each patient, needs a particular ratio of can cannabinoids, or at least that's what we have seen in our clinical models of cancer. Not only us, but the rest of the research group that are working in this field. What we see is that some types of tumors, for instance, uh, glioblastoma, brain tumors, in this case, uh, more THC works better than a one-to-one -one ratio. Once again, I got to say this, and I know I've said it a million times, there is no such critter as one size fits all. There just isn't. Some people need a little bit more. Some people need a little bit less. Some people, there ain't nothing that's going to work. And part of that, I believe, personal opinion, is because they don't think that it will, it will work. And if you cannot convince yourself that what you're doing is going to work, then no matter what gets done, it's not going to work. 
because your mind, your consciousness is going to work against you. Your body listens when you think it really does. For the record, <clears throat> cannabinoidal or CBD is a non-psychoactive compound in the cannabis plant. There are no simple answers when it comes to cannabis treatment. Just taking a little cannabis oil every day may not reduce the size or severity of a brain tumor. This leaves patients in a difficult position. On one hand, cannabis may be extremely effective cancer treatment. On the other, there is currently no way to tell how much will be effective for each individual case. To help shed some light on the issue, there are a few success stories from people who shrank their brain tumors with cannabis. And there are some videos attached here. Um, and this does go on a little bit longer, but I'm just going to go ahead and share this with you all because I think for the most part, those of you that are listening, y'all know me. And when you listen, it's like, okay, she's off on one of her. Yeah, I really think cannabis, you know, if you believe that there is a creator, an intelligence that created this whole thing, do you really think that it put things in here that um, serve absolutely no purpose whatsoever? Or the only reason they're here is to get you high? You don't think that this stuff, you don't think that the medicine men of your, you, um, use that shit just to get high? No. Mother Nature has a medicine cabinet. Where do you think Big Pharma got a lot of its ideas? And then synthesized it. Synthetics do not absorb into the system as well as natural. Yes, Grimmy herb. Thank you, Rob Works, for firing up the bubbler. Okay, I'm going to put this over here on the effing site. And I think I'll also put it over on mines really quickly, or maybe not so quickly. Um, but I think, and you know, once again, whatever I... I am not a trained professional at any of this, not even doing the radio. <laughs> so please do your own research, okay? Don't just take my word for it, because really, seriously, I am like the head wackadoodle of this place. So I put this stuff out there. You can either toss it in the garbage bin of your brain, or you can research it and then call bullshit on me later. And I'll go, oh, hey, you know, if you prove that I'm feeding you a line of shit, Please let me know, and I will follow your path and see just exactly how you came to that conclusion. So, okay. Now, back to my pocket I go, because I do have a few others in here. Um... as soon as I scroll up. <laughs> okay. Um, where did I put that? Where did I leave it? There it is. It's not in my pocket. This is from worldtruth.tv. I got this one off of Twitter. The nine best herbs for lung cleansing and respiratory support. For those of you that wish to imbibe in your herb via smoking, you know, the old-fashioned way. If you need to clean out your lungs, here we go. Your respiratory system is constantly working, all day, every day. It is the vehicle for oxygen to enter your body. Yes, I see I'm being paged. That's right, Grim. <laughs> I am a trained professional wackadoodle, although the training that I took was from the School of Hard Knocks, and every once in a while it left lumps. <laughs> what about poison ivy? Poison ivy, there are things to deal with poison ivy as well in Mother Nature's medicine cabinet. And poison ivy does um, 
have some beneficial purposes. Oh, trained by the very best whack-a-mole. Well, you know, that's part of that school of hard knocks thing, poxified. <laughs> I had to take my turn in the little pop-up thing. Yeah, got a few thumpins along the way. So, back to this article. <clears throat> Unfortunately, yeah, um, it can also be an entry point for pollutants, irritants, dust, mold, fungus, harmful organisms, and other toxins, <coughs> a.k.a. chemtrails. Unless you're living in a bubble, the constant assault from impurities can take its toll. Fortunately, whether you're experiencing the negative effects of inhaling toxins or simply want to ensure your lungs are always at peak performance, ha <laughs> ha! Oh, sorry about that. Nature has provided a number of herbs and botanicals that provide deep nutrition for the respiratory system. So how are herbs beneficial for your respiratory system? Well, they support lung health typically um, by offering one or more of the following benefits. Acting as an expectorant, which helps break up and expel chest congestion. Soothing irritated nasal passages and airways. Relaxing the muscles near the upper respiratory system to quell a cough calming the release of histamines, fighting the harm harmful organisms that can produce upper respiratory problems, and um, as a source of antioxidants, reducing oxidative damage and redness. So, osha root, O-S-H-A root. It is an herb native to the Rocky Mountain area and has historically been used by the Native Americans for respiratory support. The roots of the plant contain camphor and other compounds which make it one of the best lung support herbs in America. On the, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the main benefits of Osho root is that it helps increase circulation to the lungs which makes it easier to take deep breaths. Also, when seasonal sensitivities flare up in your sinuses, osha root, which is not actually an antihistamine, does produce a similar effect and may be help calm the respiratory in irritation. Number two is eucalyptus, which happens to be one of my personal favorites. I have it going in my diffuser almost every day. <coughs> Excuse me. I haven't for the, like the last week. I've been grabbing other oils for some dumb reason, but I think, I think I need to put, yeah, with my little issue I'm having this evening, I think I need to put some eucalyptus in my diffuser this evening. So this is native to Australia, and eucalyptus isn't just for koala bears. Aborigines, Germans, and Americans have all used the refreshing aroma of eucalyptus to promote respiratory health and soothe throat irritation. Eucalyptus is a common ingredient in cough lozenges and syrups, and is effect, its effectiveness is due to a compound called um, cinoline, sen, cinoline, c-i-n-e-o-l-e, -E, whatever. <laughs> Why do I have to pick these things that I can't pronounce the damn words? I need to look these up before I do this, so I don't sound like a, t a total window licker. Oh well. It has numerous benefits. Number one, it is an expectorant. It can ease a cough. It fights congestion and soothes irritated sinus passages. As an added bonus, because eucalyptus contains antioxidants, it supports the immune system during a cold or other illness. Number three is lungwort. Now, lungwort is a tree-growing lichen that actually resembles lung tissue in appearance. However, this natural remedy doesn't just look the part. In as early as the 1600s, lungwort has been used to promote lung and respiratory health and clear congestion. Lungwort also contains compounds that are powerfully effective against harmful organisms that affect the respiratory system. Another one of my go-to oils, oregano, which I always do at least a drop of that in my 
diffuser. I do like six drops altogether of oils in my diffuser. But <clears throat> oregano contains the vitamins and nutrients required by the immune system. And its primary benefits are owed to the carvacrol and ros mos rosmarinic acid contents. Here we go again. Both compounds are natural decongestants and histamine reducers that have direct positive benefits on the respiratory tract and nasal passage airflow. Oregano has so many health benefits that a bottle of oregano oil should be in everyone's medicine cabinet, not the stuff that you buy at the grocery. You need to get the essential oil, you need to purchase it from someone reputable. Don't buy it off of Amazon. I know the prices are good, but seriously, if it's not from a reputable, reputable company, don't go there. You're wasting your money. Hell, I have ginger that I was going to be doing some baking and stuff, and so I went and I bought some ginger at the grocery store, and I got to looking at it. God dang if it doesn't have nasty shit as a preservative in it. So it's not even just ginger. And I don't remember the exact... I probably had it pulled up and then closed it, but yeah. It's like, oh man! So now I don't even want to use it. <laughs> and that just sucks. But yeah, so don't buy this at the regular grocery store. You know, get some good quality stuff. Stuff that's got a lot number that you can check and you can check and see, you know, uh, what the break chemical breakdown is of that lot number and yeah okay number five is plantain leaf now plantain leaf has been used for hundreds of years to ease cough and soothe irritated mucous membranes clinical trials have found it favorable against cough cold and lung inflammation with anti-inflammatory and immune benefits plantain leaf has an added bonus in that it may help relieve a dry cough by spawning mucus production in the lung. Ah, good stuff. I don't know that you want to have... Okay, well, we'll just go along from there. El Campan. Hmm. The Greeks, Romans, Chinese, and even Indian... Uh, Ayur Ayurvedic? Hmm. Uh, any case, yeah, they have cited El Campaign for respiratory support, and since the 1800s, lozenges and cough drops have been produced from the El Campaign root. The reason? Well, it has a re relaxing effect on smooth trachea muscles, and there are two active compounds in the root that provide the benefic uh, beneficial effect. Inulin, which soothes bronchial passages, and another really long one that I know I'm going to kick myself in the ass for reading this article. <laughs> Allantolactin, hmm, which is an expectorant with antitussive action. And then number seven is Lobelia. Never heard of this one. Did you know that horses given lobelia are able to breathe more deeply? I did not know that. Its benefits are not limited to equestrians. By some accounts, it's thought to be one of the most valuable herbal remedies in existence. It contains an alkaloid known as lobelin, which thins mucus, breaks up congestion. Additionally, it stimulates the adrenal glands to release epinephrine. In effect, this relaxes the airways and, al airways and allows for easier breathing. Also, because it helps to relax sm um, smooth muscles, it's included in many cough and cold remedies. So, lobelia should be part of everyone's respiratory support protocol. Number eight is chaparral, <clears throat> which I've heard of. Hi, chaparral. <laughs> Wasn't that a TV show, a western or something like that, way back in the day? It's a plant native to the southwest 
that has been appreciated by the Native Americans for lung detoxification and respiratory support. Chaparral contains powerful antioxidants that resist irritation and NDGA, which is known to fight histamine response. It's also an herb that fights harmful organisms, and the benefits of chaparral are most available in the tincture extraction. But chaparral tea may support respiratory problems by encouraging an expectorant action to clear airways of mucus. Yes, I'm being paged. Um, oh, you can? I did not know that, Grim. Huh, get a weird little buzz. <laughs> How fun is that? <clears throat> What's that? Wife has Android clone of herself made. Oh, good Lord, people. Really? And yes, Chloe, fresh eucalyptus smells amazing. Um, okay, number nine is peppermint. And I do love my peppermint oil as well. And I, I even have little peppermint there in uh, veggie beadlets, little vegetable um, like capsules is what they are. But they're little bitty. They look like little BBs. But they have one drop of peppermint oil in them. And, you know, if I'm feeling just a little off in the tummy or want to just a quick refresh my breath, instead of popping a Tic Tac, which is like what, 90% or 99.9% .9 sugar? Instead of popping something like that, I just pop a little peppermint beadlet and whoo, do I have fresh breath. <laughs> and it does help clear the lungs and it settles the tummy. And sometimes if you take just a drop of peppermint oil and put it at the base of your skull, it will help relieve a tension headache that's starting to form. You know, peppermint oil is amazing stuff. Uh, peppermint and peppermint oil contain menthol. Yes. Oh, it's sci-fi. Thanks, Goober. <laughs> I just read the the headline. I'm guilty of reading the headline <laughs> and thinking, Lord. Oh, thanks, Goob. Oh well. Um, back to this. Let's see. Okay, peppermint is a soothing ingredient known to relax the smooth muscles of the respiratory tract and promote free breathing. Paired with the antihistamine effect of peppermint, menthol is a fantastic decongestant. Many people use the therapeutic chest balms and other inhalants that contain menthol to help break up congestion. Additionally, peppermint is an antioxidant and fights harmful organisms. So, all of the above herbs are available in various forms as nutritional supplements and in tea blends. Additionally, many people grow herbs in their garden. I actually grew peppermint when I still lived in town. And it will take over. Trust me, because I had, I had little, the little concrete decorative barrier thingy. And no, it went right underneath that and went right out into the grass. It was cool, because every time I mowed, <laughs> it smelled all pepperminty. But, yeah, it you have to grow it in a container, because it will take over. It really will. It sends out roots everywhere, which may not necessarily a bad thing. But And the bees like it, too. But, uh, let's see. Okay, additionally, many people grow herbs in their garden and simply consume them as food. And that's not a bad idea. And I have done that. And, you know, if you take the peppermint leaves and you dry them out and then you crush them, you can make tea, your own tea with them. And pretty tasty. So, if you grow them yourselves, you can rest easy knowing the source is organic, contains no pesticides, and is ethically harvested given clean water, etc., which, you know, if you live in the city, mm, that's kind of questionable. Well, actually, living out here in the country, too, even my well water, it can be questionable. Depends on how much shit leached down into it. Of course, you'll need to do your homework to determine the appropriate dosage for you and your individual health circumstances. These are not factors for which you can assume the best. 
ask questions, and verify that you're getting the best product possible at the correct dose. Because dosage is key. Too much can be too much. I know there's a lot of people that say, oh, but sometimes if this is good, then more is better. No, it's not. And sometimes not getting enough can be worse than not getting any at all. Because then whatever bug you've got can build up a defense mechanism against whatever you're using. So yes, dosage is key. To make it easy, at Global Heating Center, we've made our own blend of Altrex, which contains all of the herbs listed above. La da 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 da. It's organic and wild crafted, as well as orange peel, menthol crystals, and nascent or nascent iodine. Ah. So, I have used a lot of these already, but this this was apparently posted by Dr. Edward F. Group the Third. So, and there are links to all of the other things that kind of accentuate his point or support his hypothesis or whatever. Hi, Vinny! I see you! Okay. What is that? Uh, okay, I gotta check out this link Grimmy put up here. Holy mackinoli! That's a house. That's a big house. Okay, put this over on the effing site as well. There we go. That's the one I want to use. Now, and, and you know, I, <coughs> I did a lot of different groups and stuff over here on mines, and bless your hearts, I love mines, but man, it's just an awful lot of bother. <laughs> it's kind of like the way I am over on Fakey Book too. I'm in an awful lot of groups over there. But damn it, if I'm not willing to put it on my own feed, why in the hell do I want to put it in a in a group thing? So I just always post it on my own feed. So yeah, I'm kind of lazy like that. Okay. Now back to my let's see. I'm gonna go to this one. This is from Elephant Journal. Dot com and it's dated March the 16th of this year. Let's see. Okay, from the elephantjournal.com. Major solar storms causing anxiety, fatigue, and powerful energy shifts, March 16th through the 26th. So, if you're feeling just a wee bit wonky, Oh, it's a much bigger house than it was. Oh, you lived there, Grim? How cool. Holy mokes. Somebody did some addition, huh? Yeah. That remodeling itis bug. Wow, when it bites you. And then you get you wind up having a terminal case of remodeling itis. Or it tried to be a terminal case and I finally said, mm, "No, I'm done. This house is going to kill me." So, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, the day science begins to study non-physical phenomena, it will make more progress in one decade than in all the previous centuries of its existence. To understand the true nature of the universe, one must think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. Nikolai Tesla. So, Cosmic energy has been at an alarmingly high intensity for some weeks now, and it's likely that many people are feeling frazzled and exhausted. I can attest to that. 
Some people uh, may be currently wondering how much more of it they can handle. And unfortunately, this isn't settling down anytime soon. Currently, there is a large 200,000 kilometer wide canyon shaped coronal hole that has opened up in the sun's atmosphere, dividing almost the entire earth facing hemisphere of the sun. From this hole, on Tuesday, March 13th, a stream of high-speed solar wind, or hot plasma, was ejected and flew toward Earth at a speed greater than 600,000 or 600 kilometers per second. Wow, that's really fast. This highly charged wind has been buffeting Earth's magnetic field, or protective bubble, ever since. Solar flares are sudden flashes of brightness that are gaseous eruptions from the sun, not unlike the ones that I have that fuel my rocket chair. <laughs> and they release vast amounts of tremendously hot, high energy particles and gases that eject thousands of miles from the surface of the sun. The amount of energy it takes for a flare to shoot out is equivalent to approximately, um, Let's see, is that 160 trillion megatons? I think that's what that is. No, 160 billion. One, two, <laughs> yeah, 160 billion with a B, megatons of TNT. I had to count the zeros. However, the Russian Academy of Science predicts that there is worse to come. Their forecast shows that they are experiencing major geomagnetic storms from March 21st to the 26th. Solar storms temporarily disturb the Earth's magnetosphere as solar winds and flares interact with Earth's electromagnetic fields. Humans are also affected because we each have a personal electromagnetic field that surrounds us, an aura. Therefore, in the same way electromagnetic energy affects our planet, it can also play havoc with our own energy fields. Although we are somewhat protected by Earth's magnetic field, the intensity, the highly charged energy, is believed to have a major effect on everything that exists on Earth and can greatly impact anything from emotions to electrical devices. Oh. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. It's no longer I pushed buttons. It's the energy fields. <laughs> sure, I'm sure you'll believe that one. <clears throat> Although we are somewhat protect... Oh, I already read that. Uh, solar storms are known to have a huge impact on radio communications, navigation and GV GPS systems, uh, technology, and living organisms. Solar energy has been shown to change blood flow, boost adrenaline, and affect blood pressure. It also affects our sleep patterns, as mentioned previously. Okay, I don't remember reading that, but okay. One of the reasons we may currently be experiencing a peak in solar activity is that on March 20th and September 23rd each year, the Earth and Sun line up so that the day and the night are approximately equal in length. Equinoxes are known to cause cracks in Earth's magnetic field, which stay open for hours. These solar storms are coinciding with the formation of the equinox cracks, which many scientists believe form semi-annually during the equinox, hence calling them equinox cracks. Durr. This will open up a portal to allow the highly vibrating energy to flow in from the universe and directly impact energetic particles on Earth, including humans. The portal allows rapid travel between dimensions of two distant locations in the universe, for example, from the Sun to the Earth. The portal is a temporary period of life-changing transformation which allows us the opportunity to experience with a full conscious awakening through renewed energy, limitless possibilities, higher wisdom, increased levels of love and wisdom, 
and this is a tremendous opportunity to align with the universe's energy. During solar storms, masses of luminous energy infiltrate Earth's atmosphere and absorbing it can be overstimulating. So we may notice our energy and that of the people around us feels super intense, like everyone is, in, is extra irritable, emotional, anxious, fatigued, spacey, or stressed. Damn, and I thought I was just squirreling. I can blame it on the sun now. This is likely due to the fact that we are currently in the midst of these powerful solar storms that are emanating powerful electromagnetic energies. I should have had my seeds sitting outside so that the sun could really supercharge them because I found all of my garden seeds yesterday. I have them in multiple places. <laughs> Because organized, sometimes I'm not. Oh well. Solar storms are known to desynchronize our circadian rhythm, which is the internal biological clock that controls our sleep and wake times. Oh great, so all of this is going on just shortly after they des or right before, depending on what part of the planet they decide to do that whole daylight savings time bullshit change, spring forward, fall back, as if that doesn't mess with the circadian rhythm enough already. Here, this has got to kick it into high gear. Thanks! Our pineal glands are affected by the electromagnetic activity and produce an increase in melatonin. Excuse me. Thus disturbing our sleep and impacting our intuition. Wonder if it also, excuse me, I got the hiccups now. Mm. Wonder if that also gives you more vivid dreams. Man, I've been having some wild dreams lately. Hmm. Okay. Uh, let's see. We may have enhanced intuition and psychic awareness during this time period. <laughs> oh, like I need to add that to my plate too. Thanks. Okay, I can deal. I can do. I'm a tree. I can bend. Carrying on, solar storms are also believed to directly impact our nervous system, causing us to feel extra edgy, cautious, and feisty. <laughs> Ooh, and as though we're running on adrenaline in fight or flight mode. Mmm, mm-hmm, uh-huh, uh-huh. So, when these storms occur, we can find ourselves spun out or agitated without knowing why. We may also notice that our senses are on high alert and that everything feels and sounds louder, brighter, stronger, and more vivid than normal. Research has found that geomagnetic storms can have a huge effect on our emotional, mental, spiritual, and physical health. Peaks in increased anxiety, depression, bipolar disorder, fatigue, and nervousness have been found to coincide with solar activity, as well as earthquakes, from what I am reading lately. Um, this can be so extreme that many people will feel as though they have entered a new reality as they leave behind their old, outdated thoughts, emotions, and beliefs. The transformation can be so powerful that it can propel people to leave any relationship or dynamic that is causing them pain or destruction. This is similar to the ascension flu that occurs when someone is going through an intense awakening period and their body is transcending from a physical one to a light body. I have yet to experience that. Just saying. <clears throat> The divine light that radiates towards us during and after solar flare activity is thought to allow us to move quickly toward ascension, which may cause us to experience any of the following. Okay, here we go. I need a drink for this. Coffee. So, pressure headaches and general aches and pains, mainly in the stomach solar plexus area. So, pressure headaches little dab of peppermint oil. See if that doesn't help a little bit. And take a drop of peppermint oil internally as well to help with the tummy. B 
because you also may feel flushed, dizzy, or nauseous, having difficulty focusing, experiencing confusion, or having a foggy mind. Wow, I I deal with that on a daily basis. Feelings of intense hunger or thirst. Ooh, I do get the hankerings. Yesterday, I had the hungries. I had the hungries really bad. Um, extreme fatigue, exhaustion, lack of energy, insomnia, and disturbed sleep patterns. Uh, seemingly out of the blue, bouts of irritability, frustration, sadness, nervousness, anger, worry, fear, grief, and overwhelm. <sighs> so far, I'm batting a thousand here. Um, heightened awareness, enhanced intuition, having insights that seem to appear out of nowhere. Premonitions, intense dreams or nightmares. Psychological symptoms may manifest such as flu-like symptoms, ear ringing or aches and pains. Frequent anxiety, stress or feeling panicky without clear reason. Mm, haven't been panicky. Temporary loss of memories, forgetting things, misplacing things. Oh, that's, that's the doorway thing. You know, I walk through a doorway. I, I, it's the hereafter disease. That's what that I I have that a lot. <laughs> I walk through a doorway and forget what I'm here after. Mm. Seeing and feeling energy such as orbs, sparks, and flashes of light. Noticing energy warming the palms of hands. Appreciating that all life is sacred. Uh, yeah, I I get that one. Noticing synchronicities, i.e. certain number patterns reappearing. Okay, lots of that lately. More consciously aware of other people's energy fields and highly sensitive to negativity. And wanting to spend time alone. Introspection. I just want to be left alone. Oh, I'm really enjoying my alone time. Let me tell you, it's... It's nice. And my doggies just lay on the floor and look at me like, you're vegging. Admit it. You're just vegging. <laughs> Dogs call it vegging. I call it spending time alone. But <clears throat> geomagnetic storms are intense transformational periods that can bring mind-opening awakenings and reconnect us to internal and external universal knowledge and wisdom or help you tap into the akashic field to ensure we resonate with this higher energy so that our vibration is raised we can combat the effects of solar activity by resting and taking time from our busy schedules to do the following hmm um drink plenty of filtered water not tap water well my I have a whole house filter, so I can drink tap water. Take salt water baths. Yes, Epsom salt, baking soda, and a few drops of essential oils. And lately, I've been putting a couple of squirts of almond oil in there, too. Oh, wow, I, I get out of the tub, and I feel all soft and smooth and silky. And then I have to scrub things down because the tub is really slicky. <laughs> oh, moving. I bet you really want to know that, didn't you? Uh, meditate and remain aware of reoccurring thoughts and feelings. Avoid caffeine and alcohol. Ooh, I should step away from the coffee. Spend time in nature. Been doing that. Consume high vibrational foods such as fruits and veggies. Oh yeah, been doing lots of that. Remind yourself that everything in the universe is made up of energy that is conscious thought and intention can... Uh, instantly alter how we feel think and feel yeah well you know your intention is a big part of a lot of that breathe deeply forgive release and surrender and quite frankly my dears a lot of people think and I know I've said this before that when you forgive someone you're actually forgiving them when in all actuality you're forgiving yourself you're giving yourself permission to say okay okay they got me it hurt or it pissed me off or whatever but I'm going to move on now and you're basically kicking them out of your brain you're no longer letting them live rent free so when that whole forgiveness thing goes on you really are forgiving yourself when you really think about it that's what you're doing 
Uh, you need to practice kindness, compassion, acceptance, and empathy. Remain aware of reoccurring thoughts and feelings. Okay. And when possible, temporarily disconnect from technology and anything or anyone where the energy is toxic and draining. I've actually, the last couple of days, picked up my um, Anastasia books again, the Ringing Cedars ones, because I've been distracted with gardening books and and crocheting, and and I've started picking up my, my Ringing Cedars books again at night before bed. You know, read something that to calm myself and put pleasant thoughts in my mind before I go to sleep. So, cool. So, the frequencies emanating from the solar storm are believed to cleanse and purify our system so that we can be free from toxic emotional, mental, spiritual, and physical blockages. Yes. Yeah, Goober, cell phone and Wi-Fi stuff is bad juju. Bad juju. Moosey's popular and... What? Oh, okay. I get it. Quote Marvin. Marvin the Martian. <laughs> Oh, Vinny, do you have a modulator going on, honey? You silly man. Okay, back to this. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, therefore, many of us will become aware of issues from our past that are resurfacing in order to gain our attention, ultimately so that our open emotional wounds can be healed. Oh, wow. Wow. I think I was supposed to read this tonight, so I would see some of those synchronicities and go, see, this is what's, I'm making connections that y'all may not get, but I get them, and that's, yeah. It is vital that we do not repress these memories further, as failure to tend to our ener uh, energetic injuries will cause them to replay in various ways, mostly by keeping us caught in painful and turbulent relationships. Because, yes, until you learn the lesson from whatever it was, you're going to keep getting that lesson delivered to you. Just my opinion. These solar storms are coinciding with March's new moon, so deep inner work will be essential over these next few days. And uh, they have a little link there to find out more, which I did read something about the new moon on March the 17th. And uh, I should have planted my potatoes then, but eh, it was snowing. So I didn't. <laughs> Oops. Okay. Um, overall, we are... Actually, I think you're supposed to plant that stuff on a full moon. But... <clears throat> I'll have to look at that again. Overall, we are receiving an opportunity for major personal transformation to remove blockages and old patterns, to release and manifest our purpose, and to expand our conscious awareness. If we are willing to actively attune and integrate this cosmic energy instead of fearfully resisting it, and if we are able to remain positive and open so that we can adapt to the fast pace, to the constant, ta uh, constant changes taking place, we can take advantage of this opportunity. Now, there's a couple of ifs in there, and you know, if really is the biggest two-letter word out there. So, during intensive energy shifts, it is highly recommended to regularly cleanse your energy field at the beginning and end of each day, by meditating or spending time alone. Or you can do like what I do, and over my uh, furnace grates, I have little things that I put a drop of essential oil on when I get up in the morning and before I go to bed, and it's uh, lemongrass, which is for clearing the air. So, um, dun 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 dun. dun. Solar wind streams cause auroras or another northern lights to occur, so there's a high possibility that they will be witnessed around the Arctic Circle over the next few days. Uh, they can usually be seen an hour before sunrise or approximately an hour or two after sunset. 
So, and they have a little disclaimer. If you are experiencing any of the symptoms listed here, please also seek the advice of medical professional. The above symptoms are commonly noted during geomagnetic storms. However, there may be other medical related causes. Um, no, I'm not going to go and see a doctor. No. Because I know what the doctor will try and do. And I'm just going to have to tell the doctor, no, I am not taking your poison. You don't have the patience to read a book anymore? Darn, that sucks, poxified. Frumpy, you have to be very, very careful with your portal, because if you leave the wrong one open, <laughs> just about anything can sneak in there. Mm, moving along. Mm, I don't think that that's necessarily what they meant, hon, but in, it, it, that does apply. Guard your portal carefully. So, where's my little... Where's my little guy that does, there he is, the little Zen guy. And we'll do that one too. Solar energy has, an, a lot, has a lot more impact on us and the globe than a lot of scientists are willing to admit to. You know, this whole global warming climate change BS. Look to the sun. Because I think the sun has an awful lot more effect on that than uh, CO2 levels. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Put that over on mines as well. Now, back to my pocket. Oh, holy carp. Um, looks like I may just have to go and check out the pig real quick. Um, oh, here we go. Let me, let me do this one real quick first before I go check out the pig. It's from January of this year. And it's from the health, healthconsciousness.com. And I had spoken about it a little bit earlier, mainly because I remembered seeing the headline in my pocket. Um, shocking new study shows half of cancer patients are killed by chemotherapy, not cancer. Yay. So, no matter how much doctors push the treatment, chemotherapy might not be the best option in the fight against cancer. As a new study shows, up to 50% of patients are killed by the drugs, not the disease itself. Researchers from Public Health England and Cancer Research UK performed a groundbreaking study examining for the first time the numbers of cancer patients who died within 30 days of beginning chemotherapy, indicating the treatment, not the cancer, was the cause of death. Looking at those death rates in hospitals across the UK, researchers found an alarming mortality rate associated with chemotherapy. Across England, around 8.4% of patients with lung cancer and 2.4% of breast cancer patients died within a month, the Telegraph reported. But in some hospitals, the figure was far higher. In Milton Keynes, um, the death rate for lung cancer treatment was 50.9%, although it was based on a very small number of patients. Okay, even a small number of patients, that's pretty damn scary. Half of them? A little over half? Alarmingly, the one-month mortality rate at Lancaster Teaching Hospitals for those undergoing palliative rather than curative chemotherapy for lung cancer was a full 28%. One in five breast cancer patients received palliative care at Cambridge uh, University Hospitals died from the treatment. In certain areas, Blackpool, Coventry, Derby, South 
um, Tinside and Surrey and Sussex, deaths of lung cancer patients by chemotherapy were far higher than the national average. Yes, I'm being paged. Yeah. I know, Moosey. Isn't it just, you know, um, there's just so many people that that don't make the connection. I mean, chemotherapy came about from mustard gas. That should that in itself should make you go really. Wow, pox! I was only on one, and I quit taking it. It was for my thyroid, but I'm doing other things now, and my thyroid is just fine. Thank you very much. Okay, back to this article. So, um, Dr. Jim Rashbos, uh, cancer lead for Public Health England, the National Health Care Service, which requested the study, said, as quoted in the Telegraph, chemotherapy is a vital part of cancer treatment and is a large reason behind the improved survival rates over the last four decades. However, it is a powerful medication with significant side effects and often getting the balance right on which patient to treat aggressively can be hard. These hospitals whose death rates are outside the expected range have had the findings shared with them and we ask them to review their practice and data. Outside the expected range. You know, that's the lovely little euphemism that they use for they're killing more people than the rest of the folk out there, than the rest of the hospitals overachievers. For analysis, researchers, including all women with breast cancer and all men and women with lung cancer residing in England who are 24 years or older and who started a cycle of chemotherapy in 2014, um, so long, um, long the main state, okay, y'all really need to, wow. British people must write different. Long the mainstay for treating various cancers, chemotherapy has finally drawn criticism in recent years, as the medicine does not differentiate between healthy and carcin uh, carcinerous, cancerous, carcinogenic and cancerous, however you wish to say that. Um, now this study, published in The Lancet, shows how that powerful cell-destroying property can mean the demise for patients as well. It's not can mean, it does mean. And what they won't tell you is that um, when someone has been treated with chemotherapy and they survive, you know, they consider someone that's been through the whole gambit of the radiation and chemotherapy and they survive for five years, they consider that a success story if they contract another form of cancer or if they redevelop or if that same cancer reoccurs in them then they just say well you know apparently we didn't get it all the last time they don't let you know that cancer actually completely compromises the immune system and makes it more susceptible to happen again they don't tell you that shit they also don't tell you the markup that they make on those drugs so, hell yeah, they're going to keep pushing that shit. Retra researchers have advised physicians to exercise more caution in vetting which patients should, I should ideally receive chemotherapy. Older and more infirm patients, in particular, might be better off without receiving palliative care, which is designed to offer relief instead of curing the disease. Cancer really isn't the disease. The disease is a dis-ease in your body. Cancer is a symptom that something is wrong, and you better pay attention. Mm. This goes on to say, the statistics don't suggest bad practice overall, but there are some outliers, noted Professor David Dodwell of the Institute of Oncology at St. James Hospital in Leeds. Naturally, he's an oncologist, so he's going to say that. I could be, or it could be data problems and figures skewed because of just a few deaths. 
but nevertheless it could also be down to problems with clinical practice yeah it's down to y'all won't move towards something that wasn't based on mustard gas and radiating people mm. All hospitals involved said that they reviewed the information and remained certain that chemotherapy is safe. Yeah, try it on yourself, hon. With the caveat that patient selection for the treatment may need to be more discretionary. <laughs> Who can afford to pay us? That's the discretionary they're going to use. Professor David Cameron of the Edinburgh Cancer Center in, at West General Hospital in en Edinburgh, Scotland noted, that the concern is that some of the patients dying within 30 days of being given chemo probably shouldn't have been given the chemo. Really? But how many? There is no easy way to answer that, but perhaps looking at those places slash hospitals where the death rates was higher might help. You think? How much of those chemo drugs are they pushing? How much is getting billed out? I know. Do I sound very sarcastic? Uh, it's because I am. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, doctors in the United States should probably take note. Considering the sheer number of patients forced to undergo chemotherapy at the state's behest despite objections from those patients and their families. In one example, a 17-year-old diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma decided to seek alternatives to chemotherapy, but her doctors, so inculcated in state and big pharma propaganda, contacted family services, who then kidnapped the young adult and placed her in foster care. She was finally allowed to return home once she agreed to undergo the often debilitating treatment but ran away once doctors informed her she'd have to endure surgery for the implantation of a chemo port. In an incredible act of Orwellian big government, the Supreme Court ruled the state was in the right in this case. And after being kidnapped and forced in treatment against her will, was denied contact with her own family. As unfathomably invasive as that was, it isn't isolated. Alternative treatments do, in fact, exist. The most promising among them for many cancers are various forma formulations of CBD oil or cannabis derivative. But thanks to the phenomenally failed war on drugs, or actually it's working out quite well for those that are continuing this war on drugs, cancer patients in most areas of the U.S. are unable to procure much-needed medicine or are forced to receive treatment on the sly, risking time behind bars simply for wanting to cure themselves. It also looks like there is a link on the bottom to, uh, this is the cannabis oil rep recipe Rick Simpson used to heal his cancer and recommends to others. So I recommend you check that out as well. I'm going to go ahead and share this one with you so you can peruse it and the many links that are attached to it. Uh, yeah, poxified, it is usually the bullets that do it. I mean, why have a gun if you're not going to shoot it? at people. Well, not necessarily at people, but yeah. It's the bullets, and it's actually the uh, person holding the gun and throwing those bullets in your direction. I agree with you, Grim. If the government has it, you should be able to have it too. Boy, wouldn't that cut back on some of that shit. Holy crap. Pandora's box has been opened. So, let me... I'm going to do this one. And do that one. Yeah, because I want nothing to do with that shit. Nothing to do with that shit. Okay.
I think I'll put that over here as well. Um. Okay. Now let's go check out the pig. Shall we? See what those piggy guys are up to. Hi, Hambo. Hi, Porcus. Hi, Miss Hambo. Or Mrs. Hambo. What is that? The pick of the day. Gravity. <laughs> okay, here's Pig Gazette's pick of the day. Y'all will get a chuckle out of this one. Slugbug Green, hey, 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 I didn't know we were playing Slugbug. Damn. That no fail. Okay. Over here on the pig, the word of the day, happiness. It's a politically incorrect state of existence. It is systematically being eradicated by chronically offended morality Nazis and humor-challenged libtard moonbats. Yes, I would have to agree with that. If you allow them to. Me? Ah, I laugh in your face. I laugh in your general direction. In the quotable quote section, D.C. Councilmember Trayon White Sr. apologized for the comments he made in a since-deleted video on his official Facebook page posted Friday morning as snow fell over the Capitol. Man, it just started snowing out out of nowhere this morning, man. You'll be better, or you'd better pay attention to the climate control, man, this climate manipulation. White can be heard saying in the video, the, um, or, oh, okay, White can be heard saying this in the video, the Washington Post reported. And D.C. keeps talking about it. We, a resilient city, he continues, and that's a model based off the Rothschilds controlling the climate to create natural disasters they can pay for to um, own the cities, man. Be careful. Yeah, sure, they made him retract that because, wow, although... Uh, it, yeah, uh, don't necessarily follow his his um, way of expressing things. Yeah, I get what you're saying, hon. Okay. Um. Oh, in their random th random thoughts section. If you're choking on an ice cube, don't panic. Pour a cup of boiling water down your throat and presto, the blockage will be almost instantly removed. I don't know that you necessarily want to do boiling water, but warm water. Uh, number two, clumsy. Avoid cutting yourself while slicing vegetables by getting someone else to hold them while you chop away. <laughs> There you go. Number three, you can avoid arguments by lifting the toilet seat just by simply using the sink. Ah, oh, oh, that's not cool. Number four, for high blood pressure sufferers, simply cut yourself and bleed for a few minutes, thus reducing the pressure in your veins. Remember to use an egg timer. Thanks, Hambo. Number five, a mouse trap placed at the top of your alarm clock will prevent you from rolling over and going back to sleep after you hit the snooze button. That would work, although that mouse trap would only stay there one morning. Number six, if you have a bad cough, take a large dose of laxatives, <laughs> then you'll be afraid to cough. <laughs> That would do it. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Number seven. Have a bad toothache? Smash your thumb with a hammer and you will forget all about that toothache. <laughs> mm, for a little while. Number eight. Sometimes we just need to remember what the rules of life really are. In life, you only need two tools. WD-40 and duct tape. If it doesn't move but should, use WD-40. If it should move or should not move and does, use the duct tape. Yes. 
these are satire? Really? <laughs> I know, Lucy. I'm having fun. <laughs> okay, number nine. Remember, everyone seems normal until you get to know them. <laughs> no, that's not true. I know quite a few people that just from first glance, it's like, no. You are so far from normal, I'm putting an Abby in front of that word. And finally, number 10, never pass up an opportunity to go to the bathroom. That is true. Because as soon as you pass up that opportunity to go to the bathroom, as you, like, get in the car and start driving, your bladder is going to say, you should go to the bathroom. <laughs> What? Okay. Here's another fun one. Um, oh, bailing wire. That is true, Grim. That is true. A little bit of bailing wire never hurt. Unless you poke yourself. So, this one. Al Gore screams the global warning uh, that global warming causes flying rivers and rain bombs. Really? Well, at least global warming profiteer Al Gore gets credit for persistence. He is still trying to scare people into taking anthropogenic global warming seriously. Now we face the twin menaces of flying rivers and rain bombs. Bizarre weather such as flying rivers and rain bombs are just some of the recent effects of climate change, warned far, uh, former U.S. Vice President Al Gore at the Global Education and Skills Forum in Dubai on Sunday. Pay no attention to the fact that he probably flew over there on a jet that was probably spitting out all kind of chemtrails. Yeah. Uh, talk to those people that are dicking with harp. Too. And uh, the radars, you know, those NORAD and NEXRAD and all that other fun shit. Yeah, whatever. <clears throat> Apparently, Gore barked that weather is extreme and disruptive because we burn fossil fuels. Go ahead. Keep it up, honey. Keep shouting. Yeah. Yeah. Those streams up there are not caused by fossil fuels. They're caused by all kinds of other fun things that y'all are doing to us. He described flying in atmospheric rivers as long streams of rain-bearing clouds that carry huge, huge amounts of water vapor over long distances, ending as heavy rain bombs over a small concentrated area, not much unlike what happened in the Truman Show when just one little sprinkler started going and... Then they all turned on. Um, let's see. Gore said that a city in California was recently hit by such weather, with the river in the air having flown thousands of kilometers from an area in the Pacific Ocean. You do realize that the jet stream is a river in the air, don't you, Al? Honey, you need to learn some science. You know, real science, not scientism, some real science science. So, who would have thought that normal meteorological phenomena could be so scary? Gore also shouted that higher humidity brought on by global warming is causing droughts. Higher humidity is causing droughts. Is that like Joe Biden saying that we need to spend more in order to get out of debt? <laughs> You guys are just really, if it wasn't so sad, it would be freaking hilarious. Apparently, um, he also said that global warming was further blamed for lightning and forest fires because Mother Nature never has a tantrum and slings lightning. And, you know, y'all are not letting them, like, clean up the undergrowth and stuff, and that's why forest fires go all crazy. <clears throat> In an attempt to make his doomy bellowings locally relevant, Gore prophesied that large parts of the Middle East would soon become uninhabitable. You know, if we would stop dropping bombs over there, that wouldn't happen. His United Arab Arab Aramates hosts were very polite to listen to him, 
Maybe the country will abandon the oil exportation that provides it with a high standard of living and go back to an economy based on pearl diving. But I doubt it. So, thanks, Gore. You're, so, you're just a swell. So, this date in history, the 21st of March, 1891, legendary Hatfield-McCoy feud ends when a Hatfield marries a McCoy. Wedding vows include ammo exchange, pledges not to shoot their in-laws unless they're begging for it. And finally, this date in history, the 21st of March, 1953, NBA re game reverts to playground mode when Boston and Syracuse ring up 106 fouls and 12 players foul out. Wow. Wow. That's, that's like a middle school basketball game, y'all. I mean, I've watched some of those, and they're quite entertaining. It's almost like Kingstone Cops. Almost. Okay. I am just about out of time. Spaceships! Spaceships! Yes, the planet is rigged now. But you know what? Mother Nature's going to have the last laugh. And yes, Grimmy, the man bear pig is real. It is real. Um, beetle quit. Man! <laughs> okay, I gotta read this. What if somebody came along with a key and gave us the chance to set ourselves free, then generously pointed in the right direction? Would that make us angry? Perpetuate our misery? Would you sit there idly or stand up and run for free? Was there something more that I was supposed to be than a slave to fantasy living vicariously? I've been waiting patiently for somebody to set me free, never realizing somebody is me. Or that I was somebody. Thank you, Ray, for that one. Oh, Syracuse is not the NBA. Oh, so what was that? Oh, that's right, yeah. Boys. Actually, that might have been Mrs. Hambo that did that one. Boston and Syracuse. Mm, okay. So it was collegiate basketball. Okay. Oh, well. Y'all been listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on this Wacka 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 Doodle Wednesday. I will be back Friday for the Freaker Friday edition of the Rocket Chair. Um, also, I do believe we will have Grimmy and Moose Girl on Friday for the Freakers Ball and all kind of stuff going on over the weekend. So, um, let me see if I have one more, just a quickie. <laughs> I'll give you a little quickie to end on. How's that sound? Um, Do I have a quickie? Yeah, here we go. We'll just do this one. Truth about cancer. This is from May of last year. And I'll just, yeah. It's the chaga mushroom. This unusual tree fungus is a medicinal powerhouse. Um, it is non-toxic. Um, and it has a propensity for birch bark. And if you were to spot it while roaming through a birch forest in the Northern Hemisphere, you'd probably assume, based on its rather unappealing appearance, that it was some kind of tree infection. But chaga is a whole lot more, and I have read about this, and I have seen some videos about it as well, and it really... Uh, I'm not really a mushroom person, but... Uh, yeah. Apparently, the chaga, chaga mushroom is actually a treasure trove of science-backed healing potential that's been a prominent feature in folk medicine for thousands of years. Its reputation as a powerful natural remedy for everything from gastrointestinal disease to tuberculosis to cancer spans at least as far back as the 16th century when botanical artisans are said to have figured out that it could be steeped as a tea for a variety of therapeutic purposes. The historical record suggests that even prior to this, 
natural healers in Asia were likely among the first to document Chaga's medicinal potential more than 4,600 years ago. They observed that the strange fungus has a unique ability to extract nutrients from its host and concentrate them into itself. Hence the Chaga mushroom's incredible density of B vitamins, antioxidants, trace minerals, minerals, enzymes, and much, much more. Um, since these, or since these ancient times science has taken our understanding of Chaga to a whole new level, um, and the West is finally catching in on, on the amazing mushroom is capable of. Just in the last century, the Chaga Mushroom's antiviral, antimicrobial, anti-inflammatory, cardioprotective, anti-hyperglycemic, anti-cancer properties have become more widely known. And prominent authorities, including the International Society for Mushroom Science, or I ISMS, ISMS, have declared that it be a uh, worthwhile dietary supplement that may be useful as a first line um, nutri yeah <laughs> one of those words that I'm just not going to butcher I don't feel like butchering this late in the show so it means that it's a functional food that exhibits significant medicinal and or tonic qualities from which humans can derive benefit so I'm going to go ahead, there's a lot more to it, but I'm going to go ahead and share this with you real quick so y'all can finish perusing it at your leisure. Um, thanks again for listening in, you guys. Have an absolutely amazing rest of your evening, and I hope tomorrow is just as splendiferous as this evening is or this whole day was for you, however things may go. Please don't let the wacky, wacky energies make you too wackadoodle. And if you do get too wackadoodle, be wackadoodle in a 